Hello everybody, today we've got something a little bit different. I'm down in my basement, I am looking over at my heating system. I have a boiler style heating system that pumps hot water through pipes to the uh, little radiators or registers along the baseboard of my house. And uh, one of my zone valves went bad. The uh, little gear set that opens and closes the valve went bad. These things are very old. And uh, it'd start trying to open it, and then the teeth were all messed up, and it would pop back. The spring would pull it back, and it would just sit there and click, click, click like this constantly and echo through the pipes through the house. And it was quite annoying. Um, I was going to make a video of replacing that and rewiring my zone valves, and things kind of went wrong. Um, I found out my zone valves are the pre-1985 or 1986 ones, where this part, this little valve portion that's on an adapter plate here, normally you have the power head. This is just a cover to it. I got my power head wired and just hanging right now. We'll set over this valve and your gears that are mounted inside this and your motor and everything will spin this to open the valve inside that little square valve body or round valve body back behind it. The old pre-1985 or 86, this was all one solid unit. The power head didn't come off separate from this. I didn't realize my zone valves were so old that they were the original, probably potentially original to the house. I don't know. They're old. I started taking this thing off and water squirt started squirting out and I'm like, whoa, that's not good. So I had to get the adapter. I've got the zone valve. I've got the adapter and it just mounts right over the old um, body. Um, I'll show you how that stuff works inside because you don't really ever get a chance to see inside these things. It's kind of cool to take a look. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about how the zone valves work to begin with. In my house, let me turn you around here. I have this ancient monstrosity of a manifold set up. It's a mess. That's what I was trying to clean up, actually. There is um, five separate zones in the house. I have a three store or two-story house with a finished basement. Basement, thankfully, was on one. There was two zones on the first floor, two zones on the second floor, and I've wired those to be one zone. It's like on my second floor. The two little bathrooms were on a zone by themselves. And really the um, registers along the wall that allow the heat to flow into the room, there's not enough surface area there to make your boiler efficient just running of them there. Your boiler will produce more heat even on its lowest setting. And this one is a nice boiler that'll scale itself back. The, it'll still produce more heat than what the little radiator fins can release into the air. So you waste a lot of energy. So I, I wired the zones together on the first floor and the second floor so that they were one zone on each floor. Um, but, and it's a two-wire thermostat system. The thermostats that you find could be either a new digital thermostat like I've got. It's not one of the smart thermostats, just a digital one that has a couple of AA batteries in it that uh, just needs two wires coming down here to run. Or you still see in some places those old, like especially the little round ones, the old uh, round honey wells that had the bimetallic strips in it that would, um, as the temperature of the house went up and down, this uh, little coil would move in there and the mercury switch would trip to um, let these things tr turn on and off. Those were good because there was no electrical parts or anything like that. It was all a mechanical system. Uh, those were brilliant. They're not ultra precise though and over time they can kind of wander in their temperatures. You might set your thermostat at 72 and it might be 75, it might be 65, who knows. Usually they were pretty close but anyway let me take you to a little clip of the day that I was going to originally show you how to do all of this to show you how the zone valve and the wiring works. Um, so you understand what how this stuff works first. Because it looks complicated, but actually it's pretty easy and it's pretty ingenious. So this is the new zone valve with the cover removed off of it here. 
and there's the motor with the proper cover over it and if you look under here there's only four wires coming down to various points in here two for the motor and two for a switch setting down there here are the contacts here this goes nowhere so these two are for your motor and these two are called an end switch when your thermostat calls for heat it'll send a signal it'll complete the circuit to uh, cause this motor to open the valve now if you take a look I'm going to operate this manually and you'll see this moving here see that little paddle piece right there that little thing right there it almost makes it down it won't do it all the way when I operate it manually to touch this little switch right here oops sorry look down there there's a little bit of a little bitty switch here when the valve opens all the way up oh, gotta grab the right thing when this opens all the way up the paddle pushes down on that switch which closes the connections here to the end switch is what it's called and then that tells the boiler it's safe to fire it up and send water through the system if the if this doesn't open up far enough to hit that switch never makes the contact here and the boiler will never fire so it's a real safe uh, kind of a safety mechanism there it's a real real cool design so wiring on this is not bad either this is what you ultimately have um, and this is what I'm going to end up working with is uh, you know two wires for my motor um, two wires for my or actually two wires for my in switch two wires uh, that go one to the motor or one to the transformer one coming down from the um, thermostat and this one coming off the other leg of the transformer going up to the thermostat let's come over here and I'll show you how all of this works so here's the transformer that supplies power to the system one side of this gets connected to your motor the other side of your transformer on a two-wire setup gets connected to one of the legs going up to your thermostat coming down from your thermostat is another wire that connects over to the other side of the motor now in this thermostat is a relay you'll hear your thermostat when the heat kicks on you'll hear it click and then when the heat kicks off you'll hear it click again that's that relay it opens or closes a switch inside so that when it's open no electricity flows through here and the motor closes itself it's spring-loaded and it closes itself when that relay kicks closed it sends signal through here and the motor opens up till that paddle hits the switch the end switch that sends your signal to the boiler so that it fires pretty slick all right so probably one of the big questions out of that clip there is why do we care about that valve and the timing there anyway um, on these systems you have these big motors like this right here these things are really powerful when your boiler fires and starts to send water through the system if the um, valve isn't open for water to flow through it can cause a, a really severe back pressure in the system so that you can damage your boiler and these things are not cheap you can blow out the air to water um, interchange um, where your um, where your your flame from combustion flows through this little section where your water also flows through the flame area and heats up the water going through there um, there's a name to it it escapes me right now but uh, it's a heat exchanger uh, if you blow that up that's that's not cheap either you don't want any of that happening so you want a safety uh, system in place to prevent that from happening and that's all that is that end switch is exactly that safety system so now I'm going to show you how what this thing looks like inside what that little valve looks like and this really is all it is when that motor turns it turns a shaft here that turns a little valve 
it's just a little rubber valve that sits down in a hole inside this cavity and keeps water from flowing through <laughs> or opens to let it flow through. That's all there is to it. It's super, super simple. So I'm going to take this plate off of here now that I have my boiler all shut down and all my valving and everything uh, turned off so that I can show you what that guys look, uh, show you guys what that looks like. Alrighty, so this is what this thing looks like. Inside there, if you take a look, I mean, there's nothing but a little hole there in one pipe and the other up there. That's it. It's just a hole. You know, you can see a little bit of uh, stuff that's collected in there over the years, but it's not bad. This is in pretty good shape. So, the way this works, I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep a light in here and hold this. But this zone valve, notice there is two dots there, or two little holes, and one there. See on this, there's two dimples and one there. This ball needs to face to the bottom, but it'll set right in those so that this opens and closes. Now, you'll want to double check your motor to make sure it mounts on there, your zone valve, properly. But I think when you put this in, it should be in the closed position because that's what the zone valve is normally in, is closed. And see, it's flatted on two sides. So, if I get my zone valve down here, it'll set just like this, and see it's flatted on two sides in there, at that angle pointing from, it would be pointing from this corner down to that corner. See how it is there? About 45 degrees or so. So, set that back up there out of the way. So, when I set this in here, and it's closed. See those flaps are about 45 degrees. Let's see, which way did I say? That way to that way? You know, I forgot. Let's go take a look again. This is why you measure twice, cut once. So it's going that way. And if I turn that and put that, it's going from this side to this side, it's going this way from this side to this side. So let's go take a look at that again. Measure my dot. Yeah, that side to that side. That's how it went, isn't it? So. Let me get two hands on this so I can put it in. Let's. I'm going to put this on there and then check it. How about that? <laughs> All right, and this is why we test fit stuff. I had it backwards. Um, this thing, because all the uh, connections are up on top here, I, ha I was looking at it from the other direction. This actually seals the upper one here, the upper hole. And if you look at the upper hole... The bottom one is big and the upper one is a little bitty hole so that this fits into there a lot easier. It fits up against it a lot easier. So that will go in there just like that. And then when you operate this, it comes off of that upper hole so that water can flow through. And then it pushes back up against it to close it off. Pretty slick, isn't it? Let's see it again. It's not a lot, not a lot of movement, but you can see it. Pretty cool. So that's why we test fit things. Now my kit comes with a new O-ring. This O-ring is smashed into here pretty good. So I'm gonna carefully extract that, replace my O-ring, and then mount this sucker back up. And there it is in place and working like it ought to. Looking good. Looks a lot better than these other ones. Um, I'll get around to replacing these, don't worry, they are a mess. When I went to rewire them, I was going to rewire, you know, jump from one to one for all the common wiring, but uh, the terminals are so corroded from age on here that um, 
I couldn't get them loose, so I had to cut all the dang wires internally and do it. So little by little, I'm going to go uh, replace every single one of those. But um, it's not easy. I'm I'm not uh, not made of money here, guys. <laughs> so I'll get to it. But this one looks good, and it works like it's supposed to. Boiler is working, and um, I'm happy. We're back in business with it. So so there you have it. Um, that is my journey to getting the mess here all taken care of. And uh, I wanted to share that with you guys because, to be honest, when when my zone valve went bad here, I knew it was going to have to be replaced. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because I'd never taken the time to figure out how this system worked, and because the rat's nest of wires, which you think that's bad, you should have seen it before. It was ten times worse. And to look at it was extremely intimidating, and I, I honestly was scared to mess with it. Um, not because I thought I'd get electrocuted. I knew it was all low-voltage stuff, but because it looked like a nightmare to figure out. It looked complicated. But I started forcing myself to look at it, start tracing some of the wiring out, see where the wires went, and everything kind of seemed to go back toward just a couple of little points. And I started looking up the specs on these zone valves to see how they operated, and it kind of all dawned on me. It all came together when the dots all connected. And I'm like, dang, this actually is a really simple setup. Um, and I, I would have never guessed that by looking at the wiring. And still, right now, I wouldn't guess that by looking at the wiring. When you go down in your basement, if it's anywhere near this nightmare, even if you've got neat wiring, you might look at this and think, I have no clue how that works. It's intimidating to me. So I wanted to share with you guys what I learned how this stuff works so that if you've got one of these systems and you need to do repairs on it, you might be able to tackle it yourself. Even if you're not willing to tackle it yourself, you'd rather just leave it to the pros. At least when they come by to um, do the repairs, you can sit and talk with them intelligently about it because hopefully I help teach you a little bit about how the system works in general. Um, and that's, you know, I didn't have a whole lot out there to show me how this worked, uh, so I figured I'd put something together for you guys to see if I could help you out. Um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I have other videos on how-to stuff out here. I do a lot of my own work because, like I said, I'm not made of money. I'm a single dad. I have two teen daughters that take up a lot of my money, <laughs> so i got to figure this stuff out myself a lot of the times. Um... If uh, you guys can, can subscribe, click that bell icon for notifications. Uh, go check out some of my other videos. I do a lot with Volvo stuff because I've uh, owned Volvos. And um, recently I got a Toyota Matrix for my daughter. So I got a couple of uh, videos of um, doing some of the refurbished work on that too. So feel free to take a look over that stuff. And uh, hope, uh, again, I hope you guys got something out of this. And I'll talk to you later.